I've been asked a few times about when I left home. People want to know how did I leave? And the reason for that is because I've talked about my situations growing up. I grew up in an abusive household. Father was gone. Mother was a paranoid schizophrenic. Clinically, she was a, she was a legitimate paranoid schizophrenic, amongst other things. She was very abusive. And how did you get out of that? How did you walk away from it? And I guess a lot of people ask about that because some of the people who watch the channel uh, uh, watch because I talk about things like that and it makes it easier for them. You know, when they see someone else who's able to openly discuss those kinds of situations from their childhood, I, I guess it helps them to connect with their own situation or understand it better. But the way that I left was by just doing it. As simple as that. When I was 17 years old, I got a full-time job. I had been working anyway. I've been working since I was like 10 years old, doing everything you can think of. But when I was 17, I ended up at Caradonna. It's a name, Caradonna Provisions which is still there. It's in Boston, and this was located in South Boston. I don't know if it's still in South Boston, but I, I have looked it up in the past, and they are still operating. And they provided food for restaurants. It was a refrigerated warehouse, bulk food. It was a tough job. I was there 10 plus hours a day, Monday through Friday. And it was a tough commute because being all the way out in South Boston, and I was living in Brighton at the time, I, it would, meant that I, it, I'd have to catch the first trolley out on the Green Line in the morning from Brighton close to Coolidge Corner and ride it all the way downtown and then switch to the Red Line. So it took about an hour in the morning and then two hours coming home because it would be after 5 o'clock, so it would be rush hour. And that was tough. I know I'm going off on a little tangent here, but just to give you an idea, I had been working anyway. I was used to working. So now this was a bigger full-time job. I could make more money, which meant I could get an apartment and get away. So why did I wait till I was going to get an apartment? Because I knew I needed to have a plan. No one was going to help me. No friends, no relatives, for various reasons. Primarily because, one, and this goes for pretty much everybody, people don't want to get involved. It's not their problem. They don't want to get involved. And two, because of the law, the way that the law works. I'm a minor. I'm under 18 years old. I leave home without a plan. It's running away from home. So what happens? I get arrested, I end up going to juvie, to, uh, juvie right? I, I'm the one that gets in trouble, even though I'm escaping an abusive situation. Problem number two, let's say I find someone who would help, right? So I run away, now they're harboring a fugitive. Worse, since I'm underage, they're harboring a fugitive minor. This is another reason why you younger people... You can't find nobody to help you. Nobody wants to go to jail for that, and I can't blame them. Can you really blame them? You can get mad if you want to. You're young. You don't understand. It's Tigger for when it's time to bounce. But you're asking a lot if you're going to run away and ask somebody to watch out for you. They'll go to jail for that. And it won't be easy. And they could end up on a child registry too, depending on your age. It's it's not worth it to anybody. Relatives don't want to get involved. You know where I'm going. So I had to be able to do this on my own. So got a job, got an apartment. Problem with getting the apartment was because of my age. I need someone to vouch for me. So who do you think ends up vouching for me? My mother. And the next question would be, why would she help you 
instead of trying to keep her claws into you. Well, she was keeping her claws into me by helping me. Think about the logic of it. People like that like to hang things over your head. They like to create a false sense of obligation. And remember that phrase, false sense of obligation, because that's something that I want to talk about here in the near future. And I can get on a real long rip about that subject. People who are abusive like to create a false sense of obligation. So she helps me get the apartment. Then I have to listen to how you wouldn't even have that apartment if it wasn't for me. Because they want you to always feel like you owe them something. You don't owe them a damn thing. You owe that person nothing. Nothing. Okay? Especially if they've been abusive towards you. If they've been hurting you your whole life, physically, emotionally, however they've been doing it. They've been hurting you your whole life. You owe them nothing. And you do not have to look back. So I moved out and I was done. Hardly spoke to her. Um, and I would run into her off and on or talk to her off and on because of my sister primarily because she's much younger and she was still living with her. But you don't have to to deal with that person anymore. If you're gone, you're, you're gone. You don't owe them anything. So what are you going back to? And then people will bring up the subject of forgiveness. And they'll tell you, oh, well, you have to forgive the person because it's more for you than it is for them. Okay, sure. I forgive her. But that doesn't mean I have to go back to it. It doesn't mean I have to ever talk to her again. And it doesn't mean I have to forget any of it. You don't have to forget what puts you in the situation where you are now. You don't have to live there. With whatever happened in the past, it's in the past. That's why I'm able to talk about it so freely. Because I don't care. I don't care. It's way back there. Somewhere. I don't live back there. I live right here. Right now is where I am. The past is gone. So I don't worry about it. So I can talk about stuff like what uh, happened to me in my childhood. Like I'm talking about somebody else. As casual as whatever. Because it's not going to affect me. I'm not going to fall apart crying all over the place. Because it's done. And I can sit there and say, yeah, I forgive her. I get it. She's mentally ill. But I don't have to forget because then I would be repeating the mistake and let her get to me again. So you can't forget how she is. I can't forget how she is because it hasn't changed. And there have been cycles where... You know, I've run into her in the past, but at this point I haven't spoken nor heard from her in about 10 years. And it was several years prior to that when I heard from her the last time. And truthfully, don't know if she's dead or alive. I assume she's alive because if she was dead, then the family would have reached out to my sister and my sister would have told me. Because we stay in communication with each other. Not so much with the family. I don't really talk to them at all. I haven't spoken to them even longer, honestly. The uh, aunts, uncles, cousins, whatever. But yeah, you don't owe that person anything. You can escape, and you will. Make sure you have a plan. Don't do anything rash or stupid that's going to get you or someone else in trouble. They always tell you, oh yeah, things can get better. They can. But that's up to you. And when you go away, you don't have to go back to it. You don't even need the closure. You really don't. I had mine. I got my closure. And it feels good to get it. And I'll talk about that also. As a matter of fact, I think I'll, um, I'll do a video on that in the next few days. All right confront confrontation confronting the abuser it can be very uh, therapeutic and it can give you the closure that you need but if you don't have the closure if you can't get it or you know okay I absolutely can't go back and talk to this person for whatever reason then success is your revenge if you're doing all right then it does not matter if they ever know 
if they ever know what became of you. It makes no difference. So yeah, um, leaving home was not that hard. I just did it. I just walked away, set myself up so that I knew I would have enough money, found a place to go. And then as soon as I was able to, moved again. You know, I lived in that apartment for a couple of years and then I moved again to erase that obligation so that she could not come back on me and say, oh, I got you that apartment. You wouldn't have a place to live if it wasn't for me. You'd be homeless. You have no idea. You know I've heard that. <laughs> you know I've had that conversation. So, yeah, that's how I left home. It was really that simple. Um, any questions? Put it in the comment section. You know, I'll, uh, I do try to answer the questions or at least the legitimate ones anyways because <laughs> I get a lot of anonymous asshole questions and comments from people who want to be smart asses and those I usually ignore if they even make it through because uh, YouTube filters a lot of that out actually that's the one thing they get right but yeah I think I'll be um, I'll be talking about that other subject here probably in the next few days so, see you again soon. Amongst other things, she was very abusive. And how did you get out of that? How did you walk away from it? And I guess a lot of people ask about that because some of the people who watch the channel uh, uh, watch because I talk about things like that and it makes it easier for them. You know, when they see someone else who's able to openly discuss. I've been asked a few times about when I left home. People want to know, how did I leave? And the reason for that is because I've talked about my situations growing up. I grew up in an abusive household. Father was gone. Mother was a paranoid schizophrenic, clinically. She was, a, she was a legitimate paranoid schizophrenic. Um, those kinds of situations from their childhood, I, I guess it helps them to connect with their own situation or understand it better. But the way that I left was by just doing it. As simple as that. When I was 17 years old, I got a full-time job. I had been working anyway. I've been working since I was like 10 years old, doing everything you can think of. But when I was 17, I ended up at Caradonna. It's a name, Caradonna Provisions, which is still there. It's in Boston, and this was located in South Boston. I don't know if it's still in South Boston, but I, I have looked it up in the past, and they are still operating. And they provided food for restaurants. It was a refrigerated warehouse, bulk food. It was a tough job. I was there 10 plus hours a day, Monday through Friday, and it was a tough commute because being all the way out in South Boston and I was living in Brighton at the time, I it would, meant that I, it, I'd have to catch the first trolley out on the Green Line in the morning from Brighton close to Coolidge Corner and ride